So we've got a stunning new graph to show you. This is from the Federal Reserve, tweeted out by a friend of the show, Jeff Stein. Okay, just look at this. That blue line at the bottom there, that is the amount of wealth held by the poorest 50% of the country. Half the country, Sagar, has basically nothing in terms of national wealth. And when I look at this, what do I see? I see political power, right? Yeah. In our system, with the way that money has been considered speech and the way it has all been rigged and who politicians are responsive to, when you have half of the country with no wealth and because of that, no political power, that explains more about our political system and the results we get than basically any other thing. No, it's incredible because what you can actually see is the exact distribution of what happened. And what I think is even more important is to dig into who holds the majority of the wealth? Because it's even distorting to paint it as the bottom 50 hold nothing, because that would imply a message that the top 50 also hold some percentage. Yeah. It's some, not that much though. So yeah. Matt Brunig over at the People's Policy Project, I talked about this a bit in my radar, he actually crunched some of the numbers here. People who are millionaires and billionaires own about 79% of all household wealth. Now, that might sound, you know, not that crazy to some people who live in the Northeast. They're like, I saw some replies to this. They're like, yeah, but what about people who own a million dollar home? I'm like, well, average home price in America is $327,000. So if you own a million dollar home, that's three standard deviations ahead of what the average home price is. And you're probably upper middle class and wealthy, exhibiting Matt's point there, which is that 11.9% of this country has a total household net worth of either a mil from 1 million to a billion, 11.9. That it owns 79% of the wealth in America. That is dramatically been accelerated also by coronavirus. We don't know how much yet. This is just 2019 data. This was yeah. while things were good in this country, right? Yeah. This is while wages were rising, middle class was supposedly doing better. It just puts it into perspective about what was actually happening beneath the surface. Yeah, that is absolutely right. Before we lived through the massive upward transfer yes. of wealth. That it's probably is, even higher. That 85. is coronavirus. Yeah. And I mean, we've been like, tearing our hair out here in lack of uh, belief that Congress is going to really do nothing further in terms of economic stimulus. But this shows you why, because the, the bottom 50 percent with no wealth, they are just their views, their needs, their interests are not re represented or reflected whatsoever. What, so when you see things like, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 percent of people want a wealth tax, that's not going to happen. When you see things like, oh, 70, 80 percent of people would like another direct stimulus check, that's not going to happen. When you see, oh, overwhelming numbers of people would like to have health care, by the way, that's not going to happen. Issue after issue after issue after issue. The overwhelming majority of the American people opinion is not reflected by the actions of legislators here. And this is why. Forget about it. If you have something that's like just of interest to the poorest 50 percent of America, if it's like a 40 percent issue yeah. and it's it's disproportionately impactful for lower income people, you will never, ever, ever see that happen. The only way that you get anything done here is by basically like shaming rich people yes. into believing that the pitchforks are going to come for them if you don't adjust things a little tiny bit. And that's basically the Biden approach is like, we're going to adjust things a little tiny bit so that people feel less enraged and we can point to, okay, we did X and Y and Z incrementally to make things fundamentally a little bit more fair. But when we talk about the numbers in this country, the 40% of the country that don't believe the political system can just yeah, like this work, is who it is, right? work anymore, that's that's who it is. When you talk about 40% of Americans who don't even vote, when you talk about the apathy that exists in this country, the sense of anger and resentment around what the landscape is, this is a big part of why. And it's a fundamentally unstable and unsustainable state of affairs for a country to be. And you cannot continue down this path.
of greater and greater riches accumulating to a smaller and smaller pool and think that you are not going to have problems down the road in a democratic society. No, exactly. And this is another thing I want to just emphasize, which is just how much we're all in this together, which is one of the things I think the media likes to focus on is what they call the racial wealth gap. Well, actually, in this data, what it shows is the top 20% of every racial group owns 85% of the group's wealth within the bottom half owns less than 3%. That is consistent, white, black, and Latino. And actually, in terms of the racial wealth gap, the way that it's generally calculated is you take the net worth of all white households and you divide it by the number of white households, then you take the net worth of all black households and you divide it by those number of households, which would lead you to conclude that there's a massive wealth gap, which is true by that yeah. standard. But if you decompose both of that into what, you know, basically the decile, top 10% and all that, all white wealth, nearly all white wealth is owned by the top 10%, and nearly all black wealth is owned by the top 10% of black households. Yeah. So you go to strip out the top 10% of that, take it down to the 90, same thing. It's a class story. It's a class story of every single group in America is getting screwed. And the wealth distribution is exactly the same wherever you go. So if you want a message that cuts across every single racial group in America, this is it. And yet, where's Congress right now? Yeah, uh, and that's not to say yeah. that there isn't a racial wealth gap. Of course, there are more um, disproportionately more white people who end up being wealthy in the country. But what you're talking about is that there are dynamics that go across yeah. race and that are important to focus on as well and get very little coverage and attention ultimately in the media. And when you focus exclusively on inequality as a racial issue, then you avoid creating the multiracial class-based coalition that could actually be more effective at calling for the changes that we ultimately need. Yeah.